really I think the crowd would be pretty much wanting to have their porn. I think they'll probably boo the pastor in a lot of areas. But, you know, we, he brings up some good points, which I'm going to slam dunk every single one of them. However, you know, I respect his opinion, you know, and I like what he does for a living. I'm not, I have no problem with his career. He has a problem with my career. Uh, we'll take, we'll take the next one down. Oh, there he is. Oh, this is open. This is the safest elevator in town. It's all full of ministers. I've never lost a debate to Craig in my life. And he's a sport. How, how, how do you... He never, he's a good man, because he doesn't admit that he's ever beat me, but he doesn't admit that he's ever lost either. So in these debates, it's not of like, it's not really wins or loses, you bring out our points. And I, I think that the crowd will understand some of his points, you know, and uh, I'll do my very best. But our basic difference is he's not in favor of censorship. He wants people to choose not to see porn, to feel bad about seeing porn, to feel bad about the performers in porn, thinks we're not doing enough to keep minors from seeing it, all these things that are totally incorrect. I have the statistics to beat the pants off of him. I'm good. I'm, I mean, I'm a little nervous, but I did a little research, so hopefully I do well. <laughs> it is my first debate. I mean, I've had many with my parents and teachers, but this is my first one with others. <laughs> Having fun so far? Relaxing before the debate? Yeah, the calm before the storm, right? <laughs> You know, it's kind of a liberal crowd, and so I think that they're going to have preconceived notions about the idea that uh, we're Christians, so they're probably going to think we're judgmental people, or, you know, that's kind of a typical stereotype. Ron and uh, Monique are pretty successful in the business, so they're going to be talking about the success and the money and the lifestyle, and I'm going to be pointing out that for every Ron, Jeremy, or, or every Monique, there's, you know, 300 other people who didn't make it to that level and whose lives were pretty much destroyed by being in the business. I surrendered my life to God on September 25th of 2006 and I never picked up a camera again after that. I just couldn't, uh, I, I got really tired of seeing the light go out of the eyes of the models that were involved and tired of seeing what it was costing and tired of basically running from God. I'm excited, yeah. A little nervous, you know. The East Coast isn't as uh, friendly as uh, the Bible Belt, but hey. I'm used to being the underdog. I mean, um, I mean, I have my arguments down, but you know, kind of yeah, just going, going through it in my head, thinking about the best way to, to present it, and then uh, you never know what questions you're going to get asked from the audience. Um, and now tonight, I mean, a lot of questions coming in from online or or Martin. You know, I'm a little scared because he's got smart questions. Uh, you know, I don't think I'll be booed, but definitely, I'm, I mean, I'm by far the underdog. I mean, um, so you know, hopefully they'll they'll listen. I think. Um, you know, am I going to change all their their views on porn? No. Um, will they think twice maybe next time after hearing some of my thoughts or, or some of the things that Don is going to share? Hopefully. I hope they give us the respect that previous audiences have. Um, but you never know. We've had streakers. We've had people walk out. We've had more curse words than I could ever say. So, hey, it's uh, the sky's the limit on what could happen. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sex Week at Yale 2008. <laughs> Our first guest is a former porn producer. Please welcome Donnie Pauling. Our next guest is a vivid girl and a superstar in the adult industry. Please welcome Monique Alexander. Our next guest is the founder and pastor of Triple X Church. Give it up for Craig Brooks. And finally, you've seen him on The Surreal Life. He's got his own documentary and Showtime, 12 music videos, and almost 2,000 adult movies. Give it up for Ron Jeremy. I've heard better. I've heard better. Finally, of course, our moderator for tonight's debate. Please welcome ABC News Nightline anchor Martin Bashir. Hello, I'm Martin Bashir, and this is the Nightline Face-Off. Like it or hate it, it's impossible to ignore it. Pornography now qualifies of, as one of America's most successful industries. According to one trade publication, the business of pornography earns $14 billion a year, employs more than 100,000 people, and is one of the most popular subjects for surfers on the web. Generally featuring consenting adults and regulated solely for those above the age of 18, pornography seems like a harmless form of entertainment that hurts nobody. But there are others who are not so sure. 
They point to the effect of pornography on young people, suggesting that the largest consumers of pornography are young boys between the ages of just 12 and 17. They also claim that much of pornography is about degrading men and women and that an interest in pornography may well harm people's marriages. So today, in the Nightline Face-Off, we want to ask, is America addicted to pornography? Joining me on stage are four individuals who have strong views and strong connections to the business. Monique Alexander is an actress and a model with a considerable number of credits to her name, most of which we cannot mention. She's a contracted <laughs> star with Vivid. And I noticed that your performances have also garnered a series of awards, including Best Actress and Best Sex Scene. So, Monique, you're most welcome. <laughs> Craig Gross is a Christian and an evangelist who discovered that believers have as much of a problem with pornography as unbelievers. He runs an online community called Triple X Church, which seeks to support those who feel that they've become addicted to pornography. Donnie Pauling had a successful career as one of the nation's foremost pornography producers, at one stage making half a million dollars a year for just six months' work. He since left the business and now speaks about the downside of an industry that once served him so well. And last, but certainly not least, is Ron Jeremy. The very name alone sends some people into a form of ecstasy. <laughs> Ron Jeremy describes himself as the hardest working man in showbiz. <laughs> he also says, somewhat self-deprecatingly, when the audience sees a schlub like me getting lucky, then it feels like there's hope for everybody. <laughs> Welcome to you all, and I wonder if I could ask Craig Gross to begin by telling us why he believes there's a problem with pornography. Yes. Um, one of the things, sir, as Ron and I have debated over 25 times, I always have to go first. And, uh, you know, although Martin asked me, Ron always makes sure I go first. Ron, could you actually tell them why? I always have to be the guy that sits on the left and goes first? Well, the left I can't answer. Going first, I'll answer, since you asked me. Because I'm not on the attack. We're not on the attack. I like what Craig does for a living. I have no problem with that. We, you know, we have organizations in the porn business, PAW and AIM, that try to get girls out of the biz if they're having problems with it. We try, you know, if, he, if he finds girls that don't really belong in the business, have emotional problems, leads them to Christ or the path of righteousness, I have no problem with that. He cares about what he does, you know, and he's sincere. He's not a hypocrite. You know, he has a wife and kids, and I've traveled with him. So I'm not on the attack. If I, how am I going to begin the debate? Here's Craig Gross. Nice guy, cares about kids. I'm gone. Check, please. Where's my limo? You know, whereas he's on the attack. He comes after my industry. Me and Monique are going to defend it, and I'm going to slam dunk every one of his points. Okay, well, let's hear it. <laughs> And I would say at, at 5'4", Ron, you won't slam dunk anything. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Sorry. That was good. I'm excited to be here tonight. And, and what, one of the things that I want to be clear of is that my ministry, TripleXShirts.com, and my belief is not to take away your right to see porn. If you like porn, go ahead and watch it. You know, I'm here to help those that are really having a tough time with this stuff, help those that, that want out of porn. Our website offers uh, free software called X3 Watch that monitors where you go online and sends a report to your mom, your pastor, your wife, your girlfriend, of any site that you look at. Some of you are like, I'd never sign up for that software, and that's fine. But those that want out of looking at porn, it's great accountability. Our website goes to porn shows. That's where I met Ron and where I've seen Monique. At those shows, we hand out Bibles that say Jesus loves porn stars. Uh, because I believe that Jesus loves pastors and porn stars the same. And uh, tonight, although Ron is my opponent on stage, uh, he is a friend. And, uh, you know, I'll take his points. I've heard him before, his arguments. They don't hold up. Uh, so I'll share with you four quick points on uh, why I believe not only is America addicted to porn, but why this is such a big deal. The first is pornography is not real. It's fantasy, not reality. A lot of you guys that are grown up watching porn, you're seeing these women as ideal. You're gonna be disappointed in your future sex life because it won't match up to porn. An internet woman never says no. She doesn't have needs and feelings and emotions and those of you that have never been involved with a real woman, you're just involved with this internet stuff that looks nothing like 
a real relationship or real sex. For girls, those of you that are watching this stuff, you see these images as ideal. You, it, it gives you unrealistic expectations about sex, about what you should, you should look like, how you should act. And that's what I think is a very scary thing in today's world, as you guys are consuming more porn than any generation before you. I think it's dangerous. Not only do I think that, the, the Mies Commission, uh, along with the Surgeon General's workshop on pornography, have both agreed that pornography is harmful. You say, well, what's the big deal about fantasy? Well, okay, they've sold you a product that's a lie. They've sold you a product that, you know, you think they love the sex. You think they're hot and heavy getting into this. Most of the gals I've been in the porn industry don't enjoy the sex on camera. A lot of them then don't even enjoy the sex off camera. Ron, I've seen one of his movies, his documentary. It's recommended for all viewing, pretty much. But uh, in his documentary, he says himself, you know, when I'm getting hot and heavy on these sex scenes, I fantasize about Vietnam casualties, <laughs> dead dogs, and grandma. So that should just show you that they've sold you a big, enormous lie. I, I read this in an article. It says, porn teaches a man that sex means using and penetrating a woman's body however he likes, assuming she'll love it as much as he does. It teaches women that sex means performance, doing whatever pleases him and acting like she loves it looking good while doing it. Porn isn't real. It's fantasy. The second point that I like to make is that porn is not consenting adults having consenting sex for consenting adults to watch. The average age that someone sees porn is 11. And I know all of you are over the age of 18, but, but just show of hands, how many of you in this crowd have seen porn before you were 18? Yeah, I mean... You little perverts. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, it doesn't even take me asking that. You've grown up, in fact, the adult industry knows this. They say that 20 to 30 percent of the traffic on porn sites is coming from children under 18. That came from the NRC report 2002, if you think I'm making it up. Also, the London School of Economics report in 2002 says 9 out of 10 kids have seen pornography online. I mean, it's not difficult. You type in the word teen or you type in the word school girls on Google and you're gonna get an obscene amount of porn and my problem is not just kids viewing porn in porn as you all are watching some of you you, you notice this common trend in porn and Ron's not the norm he's 54 and still in the business most of the people in porn are, are younger 18 to 22 and, and what they're doing with these 18 year olds especially is making them look like schoolgirls, making them look in embraces and pink tails and cheerleading costumes, that these are kids. And so not only are kids seeing this, they're portraying kids. I mean, Hustler's most popular line is called Barely Legal. And Barely Legal on the box, it says, from the homeroom to the bedroom, these young cuties are eager to please and try in everything. If you keep going beyond that, it's not just Barely Legal on Hustler. Some other titles I found, Exploited Babysitters, I'm only 14, young, dumb, and full of don't tell daddy. And, and you laugh, you laugh at those titles, but here's what I'm saying. You know porn ends up in the hands of kids, and you know what this industry is doing. If, if the porn industry, they say, oh, well, we, you know, we, we've tried to stop that. The fact of the matter is, if they figured out a way to get porn in every home in America, they could probably figure out a way to avoid some of this. And sure, it's the parents' responsibility. It's not the Washington's, it's not the government's, but hey, they could help us out a little and not do the things that they're doing. The third point that I like to make is that pornography is degrading to women. It doesn't empower them. You're gonna hear these two, which, trust me, are not the norm in porn. Uh, Ron has been in this 29 years. Monique is a contract star for Vivid. Most girls and guys are, are not in the position that they're in, are not celebrities, are not making millions of dollars. I'll show you a few. And, and here's what I don't get, though. Just because they're making millions does not mean they're empowered. Just because you're, you're doing these things and making a lot of money. In fact, though, most gals in the industry are paid less than $1,000 for a sex scene. And sure, that's better than working at Starbucks. But, but you're not empowering them. I mean, you guys are a smart crowd. You tell me if some of these titles sound empowering. These are just titles that are out there that you can see. They're one of the 13,500 films that were made in the last year. B is 29. Sloppy seconds. That is whack. One plus one more. B 
factor 26. That means there's 25 previous volumes. <laughs> but here, <laughs> factor 26, if you pull the box cover, it says many of these images depict women grimacing or crying. Ron will say, well, you're picking on one side of the industry. That's a small you know, minority of what goes on. And in reality, it's not. I mean, some of the titles that Ron and, you know, are, uh, and, and Monique have been in. Monique's been in <laughs> Blondes, Bite My <laughs> Barely Legal 19, Dirty Girls, I Swear I'm 18, <laughs> and a movie called Young <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't get how that's empowering. My wife and I went to the AVN award show this year. It's the Grammys or the Oscars of porn. We sat as Monique and as other actresses won these awards for best sex scenes, best <laughs> best whatever. My wife and I left going, do you think any of them as children, as they were on the swim team or cheerleading team, or, or, or had the different ribbons and the trophies, ever dreamed of women, winning one of these awards? And, and I wasn't sold on it. I, I wasn't convinced by their acceptance speeches that this is really what they wanted oh, to Craig, do with Craig, you have their life. one more minute now, so we need to get to your fourth point. The last thing, and you know, I, I must say that one of Ron's titles, I mean, Ron's done 1,800, so we can't even get that. And, I, and I'm telling you that pornography is degrading. The last point, there's no such thing as please watch porn responsibly. They're going to fool you and trick you into thinking that, you know what, you can be done with this. You know, it's just healthy. It's, uh, you know, entertainment. I'll close with this, a letter I got from a student after one of the debates with Ron. And he says this, I'm a student at James Madison. I attended the debate. The one thing I left with feeling even before that night is that porn desensitizes you. What you fantasize about during a session and what goes on in the bedroom are two completely separate things. I tried to get my girlfriend to go along with some role play. It was awkward. Every time we had sex, though, I had to close my eyes and pretend there was another situation. And no matter what it was, that brought me to orgasm. Just being with her never worked. I wanted to say thanks for saying something I've been thinking about for months. It shed some light on some of my problems, and it's something I have to work to change. I'd rather reach orgasm with whomever I'm with rather than someone I make up in my imagination. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, Craig. And now Ron is going to give us uh, an explanation of why he doesn't think there's a problem with porn. Well, anybody can be addicted. I'm not saying it's not a problem, but you don't blame an entire industry on a few people who have problems. With a show of hands, who's ever seen porn with a significant other? Boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. Friends. Okay, it's pretty good. No, friends. So people can see porn responsibly. He's quoting the Mies Commission. You've got to be kidding me. You know, there was a Nixon Johnson committee in America, a Fraser committee in Canada, a Williams committee in England, a Danish committee over in Denmark, and they found no correlation between viewing adult material and committing heinous acts. In fact, in the New York Post, actually, I'm sorry, in the, the Washington Post and Newsweek, there's an article how the web often prevents rape when a man often, you know, well, actually, I'll quote this. In an article on channel C CBS, KLBK, they did a survey in Lubbock, and they said, we talked to some local psychology, psychological experts who counsel people who exhibit sexually violent behavior, and they say that there is nothing proven at this time that says that one causes the other. But they say porn could be used as an outlet for sexually violent individuals. So there's never been any findings or correlations at all that ever said that porn, viewing adult material, leads to violent sexual behavior or deviant behavior. Most forensic psychiatrists like Dr. Ronald Markman, have said they found two things common among serious sexual offenders. One, they had been abused at home, raised by one parent, usually a mother. Two, they had very little education, barely got through high school, often didn't even own a VCR or DVD player, did not have any kind of over amount of viewing adult material, so that's totally incorrect. He talks about the Mies Commission. Here's one of the findings from a fellow that he doesn't like either, James Dobson. Am I correct? Not your favorite person. And he says here, this is a quote, in the, uh, in the uh, USA, he says here, under other circumstances, said Commissioner of the Mies Commission, James Dobson, you're not going to believe this, conservative Christian who founded a group called Focus on the Family. 
why would someone willingly devote a year of their life to depictions of rape, incest, masturbation, mutilation, defecation, urination, child molestation, and sadomasochism activity? The 19th, the 1,960-page report was rife with warnings about the negative social effects of pornography and allegations of adult film stars being raped, kidnapped, and tortured by employers. What the hell planet does this guy live on? You're saying this is the Mies Commission. Now, as far as him talking about these niche, these kinky websites, they do exist. Because you have fantasies for all, any, all kinds of desires you might have. Uh, fantasies you might think of yourself. Maybe the adult films will, okay, will take it, distribute it for you. But these are simply fantasies. He's talking about a very, very select few. They exist, but it's not the majority of the business. I'll prove it. Well, there's who here ever saw a film called Pirates? Raise your hands. Yeah. And, okay. That film was, huge. It was one of the biggest selling films of last year and had pirates, special effects, storylines. Not or the things he talks about. That exists, but he got that off of sites called niche websites, kinky websites. Not the majority of the business. Biggest selling films of the last few years were Jenna Jameson tapes with 8,000 out the door, and they did not have, what was it? So he's talking about a very small section of the adult industry, and it exists. And for those of those kind of kinky fantasies, fine. But it's not the majority. And, about, and again, he says, oh, the barely legal, showing young girls. Anybody ever hear what MILFs are? Anybody ever hear of MILFs? Yeah. What, what does it stand for? They're just as many, and we, we looked at a survey together on a computer. There were just as many depictions of older women as younger women being depicted in porn films. In fact, they made a law called CPAA of 1996, which says right here, they actually arrested a film and busted a, uh, the tin drum in Oklahoma. They busted it because they made a law. You cannot depict a person as a minor engaging in a sexual situation. It's called CPPA. It says here the police action was taken in the wake of District Judge Richard Freeman's ruling on Wednesday that the, the movie was obscene under the Child Protection Prevention Act, CPPA, which defines obscenity as any depiction of a person under 18 uh, anyone portraying a person under 18 having sex or simulated sex. And because of this law, Adrian Lynn couldn't distribute his movie Lolita. They took Blue Lagoon off the shelf, took the Tingem off the shelf. It actually affected more mainstream films than it did porn. But we cannot and don't depict people as minors engaging in sex. Max Hardcore to change all of his titles from college co -eds, uh, high school co-eds to college co-eds. So no one is depicted in a porn film as a minor. Do we say barely 18? Yes. 18 and over, that's the thing, right? Now, as far, and there are so many spots, as far as the, the women who are being empowered, first of all, there's an organization about the whole feminist thing. There's a, this is right here from, again, USA. <laughs> they're dividing their attitude about porn. And it says here, there are at least four different feminist positions on uh, erotic labor, which includes things like pornography and prostitution. The second wave coming out of the 1960s, 70s, and 80s suggest that porn degrades and objectifies women. Today's third wave posits that porn can empower women and allow them to embrace their sexuality. Those schools of thought have clashed conspicuously on some campuses where young women have been begun producing their own sex magazines. In Harvard University, there's a magazine called H-Bomb. Boston University has a magazine called Boink. Women modeling, women running it, women producing it. And our industry, we have articles on women who run the business, who form their own companies and have men that work for, him, for them. Now, we say empowering women. One of the ways society measures success is when you make a lot of money. It's not the only thing, but these are all the girls who are becoming millionaires, okay? So I guess Craig would like these girls who haven't had a lot of college education to go to McDonald's. But here we have Tara Patrick. We have Jenna Jameson over here. These are all the girls who are now becoming multimillionaires. King de Royale, Bella Donna, Francesca Lay, Tella Wayne, Savannah Sampson. Who's right over there, by the way? And she has her own winery. <laughs> she took her money. Did you, did you participate in defecation, urination, masturbation, rape, incest, torture? No, you didn't. Okay, good. So James Dobson is an idiot. Okay, here we go. Stomach Daniels. And goes on and on and on. The girls you are got, running you the got business. one minute left. Guys work for them. Here I have, and by the way, as far as children seeing porn, we're not trying to do that. Laptop porn. No one here has a cell phone provider that is showing you porn because the technology is there, but while we can't prove age verification, nobody in this room is gonna get a cell phone provider to show you hardcore, because we're trying to be responsible. Also, we have tons and tons of spywares. He advertises them, 
They have articles and articles on all different things. This is called the Exterminator Porn Alert Released. They have this one here called the, the Guardian Office Porn Detector. So you can avoid your kids from seeing porn. It's not that tough. So r run Jeremy there with a spirited defense. Um, <laughs> I just got started. <laughs> we'll, we'll come to you in a second. Donnie. Like Craig, I believe very firmly in freedom of speech and freedom of expression. I don't want to take that away from anyone. I believe that it's education and not legislation that changes people's hearts. So even though I'm a Christian, I don't, I don't believe in legislating the porn industry. But um, before I continue, one of the things that Ron said about uh, he'd be arrested if he used the word <laughs> What about Dustin <laughs> Diamond film that just came out? He faked it. <laughs> You know, someone tell him what it really is. But the, but the thing was is that you said that uh, you know we would uh, you'd be arrested if you used that title. I can't anyway, shoot that. I cannot shoot that. We'll we'll enter the debate in a minute. Carry on. Don't okay, but um, what I was wanting to say is that freedom of speech and freedom of expression is great, but just because we can do something doesn't mean that we should. You know, we're we're intelligent human beings. We're not animals. And when what we're doing is costing someone else and causing pain to someone else, we probably shouldn't be doing it. My opponents are going to tell you that porn is beneficial to, cu to couples because it spices up their sex life. And to that I would say, if you need porn to spice up your sex life, I think your problems are a little bit deeper and you should stop trying to cover it with a band-aid of porn and deal with the root issues. Um, they, might, they keep on bringing up the amount of money that's to be made, but on stage we have two successful people in the business. These are, these are not the rule, these are the exceptions to the rule. Normally, for every Ron and every Monique, there are hundreds of people who didn't make it. They might have only lasted a couple of weeks, maybe you know, a few months. The average pe person in the business goes maybe two years, sometimes a little bit more. So what happens, though, afterward is they can't get a job anywhere. I've had girls who modeled for me in college. I wasn't dealing with broken people. I was dealing with educated students. And they would come in, they would think that porn is harmless because they've bought into the lie that our society has shown them. They'd model for us, spend the money on rent, and then that content remains until they're a grandma. You know, their kids, their grandkids are going to be whispering behind her back about what happened when granny was a, you know, a young adult. I've had girls who have lost positions with Fortune 500 companies because after they've been employed, it comes up what they did for me. You know, this is the type of thing that, that happens over and over again, and that's the part of the reason I had to get out of the business. I couldn't handle the guilt. I'd be on vacations. I, I made a great amount of money, and, and I had a great lifestyle, but it came at the cost to the people who I was putting in front of the camera. Um, one of the things, too, that I'd like to mention about that before getting into more stories is that it's easy to hate the porn producers. That would be the simple way out. But we have this thing called the law of supply and demand. So if there was none of you out there creating the demand for this, I couldn't have made money on the supply. So the broken lives that result from this are all of our faults, every person that consumes it. Um, I recruited over 500 models in, in my nine years in the business. I've had not one come back happy about it, but I've had dozens and dozens begging to have their content removed. I had a girl, Chantelle Fontaine, that was her name. She was a penthouse pet. I was sitting in Playboy's office because I contracted with them for a while, and the vice president I was speaking to offered $10,000 a month contract to her. When I took it to her, after she'd been in the business for 18 months, she says, you know what, I would rather go work for minimum wage at a department store. And that's what she did. And she had never did hardcore. All she did was softcore. But you know what happens? I have another girl. She was, she was making 10 grand a month on her site. She was 18 years old when she started working for me. You know what started happening to her? She'd be walking around at parties. She'd get drunk. Guys would think that simply because she was a porn star, they could have their way with her. She was raped repeatedly. She was impregnated and has a baby that she has no idea who the dad is because it was a product of rape. This is not stuff that just happens occasionally. Now, maybe the girls aren't getting raped, and maybe there are some who do enjoy it, but the majority of them don't. You don't see between takes models curled in a fetal position sucking their thumb. You don't see on the screen over and over again the takes. You don't see them puking. You don't see them looking at men. A lot of the girls that I worked with end up hating men. There are a few examples. There's one here, but she's getting paid a lot of money and she's a contract girl. She's got a secure future, but that's not the majority. You know, I had another girl 
She went to her college campus and found photos nailed on her tree, on the trees of the college campus. Another girl walked out, her dad walked out of his place of business with his buddies, found his car covered with pictures of his daughter. She says, my daddy, I've been a daddy's girl all my life. He won't speak to me right now. You know, we cause this by, con by consuming porn and believing the lie that we need this or that it's okay. Yes, it's okay. We have the freedom to do it. But like I said, just because we can do something doesn't mean we should. I'll read you a, I'll read you a letter from a former model. I'll try to make it quick. This model didn't do hardcore porn. She only did softcore. Hey, Donnie, I have a huge problem. I'm getting married in a month, and my fiancé found my pictures on the Internet. He's beside himself. He's hurt and shocked, and being that we were supposed to tie the knot in less than a month, I'm frickin' suicidal, frickin' sick over this, throwing up, cannot sleep at all. I never thought in a million years that would ever happen. How long do these pictures circulate? I'm seriously pissed. I know I did those pictures, and yes, it's my fault, but I want them off the Internet. Is there any way, anything possible that we can do ASAP? I'll pay you money, whatever it takes. This will and is ruining my life. I'm fearful that his friends will see them and torture him about it, or the people I work with in the military. I'm absolutely sick over this. I can't eat, I can't sleep, and I honestly don't know what to do. I swear to you, I never thought this would happen. I mean, there are a million girls on the frickin' internet. Why me? And because you're supposed to be a changed man into God and everything, please, I need to know that you understand my situation and find it in your heart to help me. This is destroying me. I am 100% responsible for taking the pictures. It's my fault. But it was a long time ago. I was single and I needed the money. Isn't there anything that you can do? This was like two or three years ago. Why are my pics still on the damn internet? She goes on, but the point is, porn's not as harmless and as fun as everybody makes it to be. These stories happened repeatedly. It wouldn't be two weeks after a girl started working for me that she'd be found. The thing was, I would warn them over and over again, make them sign a five-page contract, but you can't tell a college kid anything. You know, you tell them something, they want to do the exact opposite. And they don't think of the long-term effects because they've bought into the lie that all of us see when we're in college, thinking that this is a great industry, it's a lot of fun, and it's victimless. We can break the cycle. Okay, thank you very much, Donnie. Well, sitting very patiently and being referred to repeatedly is the vivid contracted artist and actress, uh, Monique. So, go ahead. Oh, geez. Where do I begin after all that? Um, first off, I, there's definitely people who are victimized in our industry, and I, uh, some of the things they say are true. But with everything in life, you have a choice. And if you choose to get in this industry, you should realize the consequences. When I got in this industry, I was 19 years old. I've been around for almost seven years. And when I first got in, all I did was girl-girl stuff and softcore stuff and all that because I wasn't ready to do boy-girl. And then I, told, I took a chance to get to know the industry, get to know the people, get to know what is right and wrong. And then I was lucky enough to get a contract with Vivid. And yes, I do make a lot of money, but the girls who don't have contracts make 10 times more money than me because they work 10 times more. And that's why the, those girls are in the corners crying, throwing up and doing those things because those girls are working themselves to the bone. Those girls are choosing to do and the other dirty things because they want the money. And it's their own fault. I have no sympathy for any of these girls. You make a choice in life. And when you're 18, you're considered an adult. And I made the choice to do it the right way. It's not my fault or the industry's fault that these girls chose to do it the wrong way. And I feel that it's awful that we're looked bad upon because of that. And, you know, with these pictures all over the Internet, when I decided to do Boy Girl, I was like, okay, this is something I have to live with for the rest of my life. I want to have a family. I want to have children someday. And I know this is going to come up. And I said, you know what? If this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to be the best I possibly can and try to be a good person so that people can see that we're not that bad of people. And, sorry. And, I, think, I think Ron was agreeing that she is the best that she can be. But anyway, carry on. <laughs> and I, I, I think that anybody who, you know, it's tragic that this woman is dealing with this, 
but you made that choice and you should be honest with your partner and that's the one thing why people say porn is so bad is because people aren't honest with their partners about what they're doing and I think the honesty is the best policy in a situation like this and within this industry and if you're honest then people shouldn't have a problem with that your past is your past your future is your future you should focus on the now and the now is what you're doing and who you are right now and you shouldn't worry about things in the past that's all I have to say. <laughs> I have a few points, please. Yeah. Wait, wait a second. I got okay. it. Wait, 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 and we all know the many, many ministers who have stood up and condemned sexuality and condemned homosexuality. And then within a matter of years or months, suddenly we learn that in fact they have a number of addictions. What I want to ask you is, isn't there a certain inevitability about this? The more you repress pornography, the more likely you are to have problems as a result. Isn't it much better to be, as Ron says, more open, more relaxed, and therefore not create this kind of furtive disordered view of the, the whole industry of pornography? Well, the first part of your question, talking about pastors that, that have fallen or have spoken out about these things. And um, you know what? I think there's been a, a lot of horrible spokespersons uh, that, that represent the gospel or represent Jesus. And then, yeah, it, before you know it, they, they fall into these same things. And so the only thing I can say to that is uh, I'm sorry. You know, I, I can't defend that by any means. And and hopefully you heard what Ron said at the beginning, that, that he doesn't believe I'm a hypocrite, and uh, I'm not going to be one of those guys that is going to fall into this. But I don't think it's a matter of, of, of re just repressing this and, and, okay, being more open-minded. I mean, this is what we've said here. This is filthy stuff that is not what God has created sex to be. Pornography is a cheap substitute for that. And, and not only Christians, but experts that study this stuff say, you know what, this is not enhancing people's future sex lives or people's current sex lives. Like Donnie said, this is a, not even a Band-Aid because a, a lot of you, it's not even a temporary fix. Um, you know, like that the kid that wrote the email said, you know what, I can't even have an orgasm without thinking or watching something rather than what's going on right in front of me. So I'm not about just, oh, you know, repressing this or saying, you know what, uh, you know, I'm not open to this because... Uh, you know, this, this is dangerous stuff that I, I want you guys to hear. This okay. is dangerous. Well, I want to rebut all, with both these guys. I mean, their statistics are such hogwash. You make this pathetic comment that these girls, majority of girls have problems. These girls have these problems that you deal with. You're backwards. For every girl you give me with a problem, I'll give you the girls who are doing very well with their lives. The Sakers, Vanessa the Rios, Samantha Fox, and on and on, Candida Royales, and on and on and on. Of girls who are now that you all heard of, we all saw when we were kids, seeing these girls in the movies. They're doing quite well with their lives right now, and they're not having problems. You're dealing with a very, very, very select few. And Craig, you yourself said to me, that, and told the audience of the other college, that the girls who are non-contracted make figures like $600 to $800 girl girl, $8 to 1000 boy girl, $1250 for and $1,500 and more for multiple partners. And the crowd's like, that's a problem? Girl makes a grand and a half for a day's work and she likes what she does for a living? So even the non-contract girls are making decent money. Plus we have two organizations in the porn business. Paw, Protecting Adult Welfare, Bill Margold runs that, and AIM Healthcare, which is Sharon Mitchell, runs that, no Nina Hartley. They look after the girls, give them advice, try to comfort them, counsel them, show them videos, they, and we, we look after our own. Okay. So that's some ice cold okay, okay, One last point, and these, these select few things, is, oh, look, addiction and people with problems, you don't blame the whole industry on. Alcohol, has a lot of problems. People get addicted to alcohol, they get into problems. You don't tell the audience, don't drink. You know, automobiles cause third amount of deaths in America. Heart disease, cancer, and automobiles. You're not going to say to people, don't drive a car, because a couple of idiots make a few mistakes. Okay. What about the central point, though, that both of these made, which is principally that Pornography creates a fantasy world. What it does is... Yeah, so does MTV with Christina Aguilera shaking wait, her booty. Wait, wait. So, honey, why can't you do that? Wait, wait a minute. Let You're not just... playing porn on that. No, no, let, let me just finish, though. The point they were making is that by creating a fantasy world, a fictitious world, it rather makes reality look very banal and tedious by comparison. Can you see... Do you accept the point that Craig was making, that actually by using pornography, 
you're inevitably going to feel dissatisfied with a real, authentic relationship with a, with a partner. Hell no! Are you kidding me? What kind of idiot must you be? You watch MTV and see these sexy girls shaking their booty. You look at Pam Anderson or Lindsay Lohan or Britney Spears. See sexy girls in the orange the You're going to blame porn for that? But no, but answer the specific question about creating a fictitious view it's, it's a of sexuality. Yes, but how do you accept Craig's point that by having this imagined universe, you actually create a sense of mediocrity about the reality because the woman you're with may not engage in the kind of practices that you're happy to watch. But the thing is, that's what makes it kind of like a marital aid sometimes. You know, you tell you and your wife, look at the film together and say, looks kind of sexy. We call it a standing ovation. You stand up, you leave the room, and you practice in the bedroom. You get through half a porn film. We're not offended by that when the audience walks out on us. So you see something you like, maybe you want to try out a fantasy that you want to try out. Look, anything you want to see in porn, they're going to have. Old girls, young men, sugar mommies, sugar daddies, black and white, black and black all kinds of orifices. Whatever, you, whatever your fantasy may be, porn's going to create it for your fantasies. That's all it is. Nothing Do more, nothing less. Donnie, he has a fairly cogent argument. It's fantasy. There's nothing wrong with that. It seems unharmful, harmless. Well, I can tell you from personal experience that that's, that's not the case. I mean, uh, my own marriage was torn apart by a porn. Ask these kids here. Um, one, one second. And and I'm, sure, you're, you're, I'm you're, sure that every single one of us knows someone whose marriage or relationship failed. So your marriage failed because of pornography? It did, yeah. And why? why? I wish I knew. I mean, it was, it was stupidity. I mean, you don't think it failed more just because your wife was insecure that you're working with beautiful women every day, and maybe she didn't trust that? No. <laughs> No. We sympathize no. with your problem. We sympathize. <laughs> well, I don't want to make fun of you for that, and I feel right. bad about that. I'm not making well, you fun can't of take you. your situation and then force okay. it on other people. Let, let but me just the, finish. The point is that, that we run across this time after time after time, and I'm not even, you know, my, my wife didn't have a problem as far as jealousy with other girls. She just had a problem with the fact that this is not the way things are supposed to be, and this is something that I don't want you involved with, and if you're going to be involved with it, I can't be with you. Okay, but that's your personal experience, but do you accept the point that Ron makes, which is principally that you and, and Craig, to some extent, have been using a number of anecdotes, but actually the empirical evidence, the evidence-based peer-reviewed research that's been done in this area is entirely equivocal. There's no real evidence that anybody's been able to come up with that pornography is profoundly damaging in the way that it was for you. Well, the, the pornography, whether or not you want to argue if it hurts or harms relationships, the fact of the matter is that people are still being harmed in it. Ron says that the, the examples I gave him are not right about the number of people being hurt, and then he says, I can name off blah, 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 and he names on his hands how many people are successful. And I can tell you that there's three girls a day that I would talk to and recruit into the business. So for every, like I said before, every success story, there are hundreds who were hurt. Craig, and, I, and I was saying, so, well, we've been doing second. this for six years. So to me, I wouldn't have a job if what I'm saying isn't true. I didn't set out to become a porn pastor. I, I started a site because I was a youth pastor, and I saw my kids in my youth group struggling with this. Six years later, a staff of people, 70 million people at our website, a half a million people using our accountability software. It proves to me that there's a, a need for this that... You know, Ron says, oh, you know, it's just a few people. I've taken people to jail. I've sat as marriages have been uh, destroyed. Every week I'm at a church and a woman comes up to my booth every week and, in tears saying, this is what I lost my marriage to. Because they can't compete with this pornography. Most people view porn all by themselves. 76% of you that watch porn watch it all by yourself. It's a dirty little secret. No one knows. And it gets very progressive. It will get you to do things you never thought you would do. Most therapists have said, and this is Masters and Johnson, Kinsey Report, that it is okay to fantasize while you're with your own wife, husband, or spouse. If you're in a monogamous relationship, you're together for many, many years, it isn't always that easy. Often you might like to use some sexual aids, marital aids, such as a porn film, <laughs> dressing up, fantasy role playing. Many, many, many therapists say that's perfectly healthy. Okay, Ron, but let's. Let, that. One, one with 5,000 women. One, one right. second. I'm not saying. But, but, Ron, you are the, I guess, uh, the very incarnation of many male dreams. You've achieved your <laughs> career and, and, and you've, you, you've spent your life appearing in over 2,000 movies. I don't know how many people you've had sex with. But can I ask you, <laughs> can I ask you honestly to answer, has your life been fulfilling? 
That's a heavy question. I mean, I chose to, you know, I wanted to be an actor most of my life, and porn has actually led me to get some really nice mainstream work. So I'm kind of, I like, I like what's happened with it. Half this crowd saw Boondock Saints, am I correct? And that's a, and that's a, I've done a lot of regular films because I've done porn. So I think, I, I like to say I wanted more to do more mainstream, but I'm, I'm okay with it, I'm happy with and it. And you feel that your life has been fulfilling? Yeah. Monique, um, we've heard comments from Craig and from Donnie about humiliation. And there are many academics and, and indeed commentators, writers, who would suggest that one of the key problems, just general problems with pornography, is that it's about some form of humiliation. It's about seeing a woman degraded in some way. Do you, do you not accept that there's some truth in that? Well, there's definitely some truth in it. I mean, there's definitely sites out there and things out there and movies out there that I don't like to see and that I think are degrading, but those women are choosing to do it. Nobody's holding a gun to their head saying, you do this now or you're going to die. Well, they may have financial reasons for doing it. Well, that. that's their own problem. You're still making that choice. As an 18-year-old person, you're considered an adult, and you're still making that choice to do that. There's other things in this world. You're taking the easy way out, and it's basically a cop-out if you say, oh, well, it's their fault. You made that choice. Well, let me put to you a scenario, then. I mean, we I had things like that thrown at me, and I chose not to make that choice. When I first got in the industry, I was offered a ton of money to do Boy Girl, and I said, no, I'm not ready. I, I knew I mentally couldn't handle it and I wasn't ready to do it, so I didn't do it. it. It's these own girl stupidity doing it on their own. I was 19 years old when I got in the business, and I was smart enough to say no. Now, okay. Some people find degrading if you have a <laughs> Now, I know a lot of girls out there with a show of hands. No, I won't do that to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They'll go. I mean, some people don't mind. Yeah. I don't mind when a girl <laughs> me. Let me, let, you me know, not... let, let me, let me just. <laughs> I mean, some people don't find it that degrading. You say, what's degrading? But I mean, let, can, I, can I just go back to yes, you, Monique? Yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> there, 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 is, there, is, there is a serious point, though, because in some cases, and I, I, I put this to you hypothetically, but somebody is offered a huge sum of money to be <laughs> upon, or to be <laughs> upon, or to be <laughs> by three men. Mm -hmm. Can you see why... Many people looking at that would say, well, that is humiliating. You know, I definitely think it's humiliating. I mean, I wouldn't want to be urinated on or do that to somebody else. But like I said, we have choices in life, and they chose to do that. Nobody forced them. And just for the record, when they would have those S&M and B&D videos, which are not necessarily hardcore, there's just as much this way as there is this way. They say, how about the man being the master, the girl's a slave? If those who follow that, that line of, of, of videos know that it's actually usually the other way around. It's the woman who's the dominatrix, the ball gag is in the man's mouth, and she's putting a in bad places and whipping him. So very often it's, you know, people like all kinds of fantasies, you know? One, of, one, one point that Naomi Wolf has made, um, the writer Naomi Wolf, is that what pornography does is it teaches people the wrong etiquette for intersexual relationships. Do you accept that it creates, in the, just in the minds of some men, a notion of women as simply consumable products? First of all, we cater to over 18. We want you to be a mature person when you see porn. Secondly, I can make a plot and go either direction, and the feminists and the people are not going to like it. If I make a plot where the guy comes home, shows his <laughs> goes, I'd rather not. Then he goes, come on, honey, then she does. Well, that's coercion. She said no. Now I make the other movie. Hey, honey, want to have some sex? Hell yeah. Clothes come in the air. <laughs> feminists go, women are not that easy. That's not good. So let me bring it to these guys and maybe even you. If I made a movie like Adam and Eve, there's a series of films that Nina Hartley hosts, How Two Guys for Married Couples. Often they'll get a real married couple to play a real married couple in a, in a porn film. It's very romantic, very erotic. The difference between eroticism and hardcore is the lighting, by the way. Okay. So it's very pretty, very sexy, both equal sex. He gives her head, she gives him head. It's very romantic, very loving, very much husband-wife. And they play that in the film. How do you guys feel about a film like that? Why don't you answer the question first, though? Would you find that offensive? No. You, you can get hundreds of films like that. You didn't that. answer this question on, do you, you know, how you feel. I mean, Fine, you thank you. 
Okay. But, I mean, How would that film affect your values? I'm not going to I'm not going to go for any of it, whether it's a husband and a wife or whether I mean any of these scenarios. I, I'm not going to say that's what you need. You know, I, the Bible need it's electives. Okay, and, and I understand. I mean, if you want to view porn, what I'm going to say, you know, and, and I subscribe to the teachings of, of Christ. It says, you know, don't even look at a woman with lust in your eyes. So I don't think you need it. If you don't subscribe to those teachings, uh, you're fine to do whatever you want. But so, I'm saying that this is not going to help you or aid you. Um, you know what they're doing on camera. I mean, they're called you know sexual athletes, and so what they're doing on camera. Yeah, you, you don't see the the takes, the eight hours it takes. They're, they're giving you this finished product that's a lie, and it's not. Well, when you're bringing you know, that fantasy into reality, it doesn't match up. Well, well, show hands. That, Who's ever looked at women with lust in their eyes? <laughs> There's your problem right there, not porn. <laughs> But answer the specific point that he was making. Which is? Well, you heard it. <laughs> no, I was confused You weren't listening? By it. No, I'm just confused by it. You weren't listening. Craig, make that point again so he can hear the point that you were making. You want me to write it down? No. no. So. Just, let's make it. <laughs> this, this isn't, no matter what title that you come up with, you know, I mean, you didn't answer the question on degrading. You're saying, oh, you have the right to do it. No matter what title, it's not needed. You know, we're saying that this... This isn't real because you've packaged in a box in the 30 minutes what you think this aid's going to be, but it doesn't match up with what you do in the bedroom. Because, like I said before, it's a fantasy. You look at something that you want to see and, ex and be excited about. I mean, you want to make a movie that's totally realistic? Look, they even have videos with women who live in older, called the Sugar Mommies. They have ones where the women are very heavy, called the videos, the full-figured women. You know, where they don't even have sex, they just have sex with the for half an hour. You, you're able to combine both those roles. I was, actually, I was in both of those, actually, yeah. I mean, so there's any kind of fantasy you might have, porn's going to try to create for you. So I mean, some people enjoy seeing women, like, for example, giving Seymour butts versus Max Hardcore. Max Hardcore likes women to grimace a little bit when they're having backdoor sex. Seymour butts wants them to smile a lot when they're having backdoor sex. They both do pretty good business. I prefer, and she prefers more of the smiling attitudes, but some people like to see people going, ow, ooh, that hurts, okay? So, you know, but these aren't, you say degrading, then who's being degraded in a gay porn film with a guy on guy okay, or girl I, on girl? I, I listen to the titles, and what you keep landed on is that this is a marital aid. Most people that look sure at porn, 76% watch it all by themselves, 40 million people a day log on the internet, most of the times between the hours of 9 to 5. This is not oh, well, what you I want. The internet Island, came out years ago. You've been doing this. <laughs> You've been doing this 29 years. Playboy was the norm 25 years ago. Hardcore is the norm now. The internet, welcome to the internet. This is where they it's all see it kink. by themselves. I'll give you that. It's getting kinkier. I'll give you that. But <coughs> okay. so what? Okay. There's, you go to video store now. Years ago, when I first got into business, there were big storylines. You, you, maybe a scene has this, a blonde, a backdoor scene. Now you could choose a specific video for exactly what you want. <laughs> like me and my wife want to watch a bunch of backdoor scenes. Just A for that movie. You want to see a lot of blondes. Just that. So now there's like niche marketing in some cases. We could pick exactly what your fantasy is. Hi, I'd like to direct this question specifically to Ron and Monique. I was wondering what your mother, what your grandmother, other relatives think about what you do and how it affects your family life in general. Okay, so just so that everybody can hear, the question that was put was what do Ron and Monique's parents feel about their professional careers, that is, the, the work they do in pornography. And I'll start with Ron. What do your parents feel? They understand it and they're okay with it. It led to a path to other things. I got my master's and did my teaching thing. But look, let's face the facts. There's a double standard in society. It's not good. It's all over the world. We don't like it. And why does it exist? You know, what's easier for men, of course, to brag about doing porn. Women can brag about it, too, and it's getting better and better but as years go by. But what do your parents feel? They're fine with it. But let me explain something. That, that it's because of the generation of, of passing it on to generation about, you know, with your kids. You know, you raise your son. You know, go get him, son. Make dad proud. You say, hey, look, look at the girls chasing Junior. He's a real stud muffin. Then you raise your daughter. Don't you dare. You don't see a father go, look at all the guys chasing Mary. Get the gun. So that's what causes it, be, it being easier for a man because than the women because there's that, that double standard, which is not good. And we don't like it, but it exists. That's why it's easier for me to tell my parents okay. I'm doing porn. And they go, okay, son, that's fine. But okay. a daughter might be a little more difficult. Okay, well, let's come to Monique. Monique, I'm assuming that your parents, when you were growing up and you, you had a Barbie doll and a, a doll's house, didn't imagine that one day their beautiful daughter would end up appearing in a film called <laughs> Punches 4. <laughs> I mean, no parent wants their child to do porn, 
But I am very fortunate to have a very supportive family. My grandmother, which was very odd for her to say this to me, came up to me and she was like, you know what, Monique, I'm proud of you. I'm happy that you're out there and you're making a living. At least you're out there and you're trying and you're not doing anything illegal. And it just really sucks that you can't be in Playboy because you've been in all the other men's magazines. That's what my, my 60-year-old grandmother said to what me. What do your parents say? <laughs> uh, my mom... I don't speak, to, uh, my father, I don't really talk to him, but my mother, she's very okay with it too. It was her mother that said that to me. So I'm very fortunate to have a very supportive family. And, and does your mother share your magnificent career with her friends? Um, I, well, for the most part, like I told my mama, my mom, I was like, call, call all your friends, your daughter's going to Yale. I mean, look, I got to come here and meet all you wonderful people and have this culture, so. Yeah, okay. uh, um. This says four doesn't take me anywhere. Great. Just a quick comment, yeah, yeah, this is a comment. That's great and all for both of them, but both of them would tell you off stage, uh, you know, when they want to get out of porn. And so if it is so great, you know, both of them, I mean, she doesn't plan on doing this much longer. You want to have a family, you want to, you know, so. Yeah, but I think porn is always going to be a part of my life. It's what I know. And I, li I love being a speaker and letting people know out there that it's not as bad as it is. And let me say that girls choose what they do in America and Europe, they often don't. A girl can choose to work with only their own husbands, only their boyfriends. Some girls like Janine and Felicia only do girls. Some do a very select few guys. The Vivid Girls and the Metro Girls are very choosy with who they work with. Okay. In the middle, um, we have, we have a, a gentleman. Would you like to stand up? Thank you. Uh, I'm curious, especially on the anti-porn side, or at least not supporting the business, what you think of amateur pornography that's being uploaded by consenting adults. Are they not being paid for it? They're not being coerced into doing it? And it's something that they enjoy doing, and it's a, like, essentially maybe a positive thing for them. Husbands, wives. Wait, wait a second. That was our side. Yeah. Great. Just helping, just helping. Great. I'll let Donnie address it because Donnie not only, uh, I mean, that was Donnie's whole expertise, amateur porn. I, I had a site that was, that was amateur porn. Um, it was first time people and, and they're the ones that usually end up getting hurt the worst because, and, and it would apply also to the situation you're talking about because you don't think right now when you're uploading it, what, how that's going to affect you long term. Um, you're, you're going to, uh, you know, a lot of these people I think are going to really regret uploading the video because you can't take it back. You know, once it's out there, if you change your mind, you break up with the person, you don't want your next boyfriend but Donnie, to see what about it. the key point that was implicit in that question, which is that these people have not been coerced, there is no production company, there is nobody saying do X, Y, Z. Actually, these are consenting adults volunteering their own intimacy for the viewing of others. What could possibly be wrong with that? That's, um, that's still what I was saying is, you know, they're, not, they're thinking short term. So, so am I going to say that their decision's wrong? That's not for me to say. I'm not their judge. But I'm saying that I think that the amateurs, more than anybody else, end up regretting it. Because if you're, a, you're an amateur couple, you upload this video, years later you're, you're with somebody new, there's thousands of people out there that have you with the old person. You but, know, the person that you're with okay, I can see the regret I can, that. Okay, I can see the long term, but in the short term, that you don't think there is any harm. I, I'm not going to say that there's not any harm because I, I am firmly against pornography being an, a, a substitute of any sort for real interest. Okay, there's a, a lady at the back wearing a quite stunning hat. First of all, as a Yale alumni, I want to thank all of you for sharing your expertise with Yale today. And I want to address a subject that was brought up about reality and fantasy. Um, some people said that, you know, porn creates a fantasy and that that makes a lot of people feel badly about reality, which I would have to agree with. But isn't that true of Hollywood? Isn't that true of literature? Isn't that true of mythology? What is, what is your question? Do you think that all fantasy that makes people feel bad about reality is bad? Yes, let me, let me answer that. Susan, and you and I both know people that have been arrested or, you know, for molesting their kids, that have s seen this stuff, you know, and it takes them to do things that they never thought they would do. These titles, you know, Ron says, oh, this is fantasy. They don't really do this stuff. Not only degrading, but when you watch this stuff, you're going to want to go do these things. You're going to want to take this stuff offline. And a lot of times it's going to get you to do things you never thought you would do. 
And a lot of times, yeah, it is commit a crime. A lot of times it's doing stuff that you're not proud of, that you're ashamed of. I've been to your show, and what happens on that show is the most disgusting stuff I've ever seen. You might be a Yale alumni, but it's perverted. It's the worst stuff I've ever experienced in okay. my life because a, of okay. this stuff. Let me go, let me go yes. Okay, one second. He is wrong. so full of crap. I, your statistics sorry, hey, wait, are totally wrong. Wait. Does not lead to aberrant behavior. Every survey, you ever said that on the planet, and you're going against every... If I thought that people watching porn are going to commit sexual crimes, I would not have been in business 30 damn years. Okay. Every finding says it does not lead to criminal behavior. Everyone here who's got a doctorate I've in taken sexology. I've jail. I've seen it. She you're knows so people. full of crap. Okay. She's an expert and she's seen it. Your oh, sorry, I got, here's my statistics. You got <laughs> Your stuff's older sorry. than me. Hang on, hang on. It's yeah. general. Okay, one second. We, we have a gentleman here. One second, please, sir. Uh, well, real quick. I agree with what you said. That uh, intimacy, intimacy should not be replaced with porn. I agree with you. It shouldn't be. You can have both. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, sir. Roger, I think it's fascinating that you have a master's degree. Okay, and I, I do have a, two related questions. The first is, why did you change your career path? I'm very curious about that. The second thing is, did you learn anything in your graduate degree that has helped you with your current skills for your current job? <laughs> special ed master's and a life in Hollywood? It was very necessary. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> um, I wanted to be an actor my whole life. I got a degree in theater and a master's in education. I did my thesis on psychodrama, using role playing to discipline kids. Then I got a master's in special ed. Um, I wanted to act my whole life, so I quit teaching, did theater off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway, and then got into equity, and did stage, and then that, and I, the job market was horrifying. So when a girlfriend sent a picture of me into Playgirl, when I was young and skinny, now they want me in field and stream, you know, <laughs> and that led to other things, and then I got, I, I agreed to do porn. How did a, working as a special ed teacher benefit your career as a porn actor? Well, people are nuts in Hollywood, that's what I'm saying. But it did, that didn't, no. But I think you utilize certain things you learn. You know, I've done, you know, you, you learn to deal with kids, learn to deal with people. You know, college isn't just a matter of occupation. You become a more critical thinker. People here at Yale will understand that. Did you want you know? to ask another question? Yeah, that was excellent. Okay, thank you, sir. My question is, isn't the problem not that people watch porn, but that people themselves have problems and they're using porn as an outlet? Just like students at Yale might use their studies as an outlet. People might use alcohol as an outlet, as, as Ron pointed out. People might use drugs. People also use porn. People use abusive behavior toward themselves. All these things are an outlet, and the problem is themselves. We agree. Yeah, yeah, one one second. That is absolutely true, and that's part of what I said in, in my statement when I was talking about how, you know, Ron saying that uh, porn spices up a couple's sex life, and that just basically says that there's a deeper root issue, and porn's just a Band-Aid. Um, there are definitely deeper root issues. There's no arguing with that. What was the rest of your question? Well, uh, porn itself isn't the problem, I and mean, the, the problem is people have these no, deep-seated you know, issues. Like we said at the very beginning, too, we're not against, I mean, we're not for legislating porn out of, the bit, out of business. We believe firmly in freedom of speech. That's why I'm allowed to publicly express that I'm a Christian to everybody without having to fear reprisal. But the fact that we can do something doesn't mean that we should. And I think that some of the examples that I, sh that I talked about, how porn affects the lives of those who are involved more often than not, I think that that means that we should become better, and I'll use his term, more critical thinkers before we decide to consume. Okay, Craig, were you going to add Yeah, I just want to read this. I, I said there's no Surgeon General's warning on porn ads or on the web. You don't see disclaimers reading that excessive porn use can cause desensitization and skewed views of healthy sexual relationships. You see words like hot virginal <laughs> or collegiate bear all. Porn is all or nothing, and they want everything. And so, yeah, I mean, we're not going to see... Um, you know, People have problems, but porn is adding to those problems. And so, yeah, there, you know, you could say that. We run into people all day long that have other issues, and you can't blame it all on porn. We're not trying to blame it all or take away your right. We're saying, look, this is adding to several problems that people already have. Okay. Oh, this is wrong. There's disclaimers on every DVD. People who have seen porn, they wave an American flag and they give you a whole speech about how, you know, look at porn recreationally. We advise safe sex, models over 18, all blood tested. We have disclaimers in the beginning of every single DVD that comes out there. Okay. So, there's right. a lady right More at the bike. More than bottles of alcohol have, giving you warnings about you can get through a car crash if you drink too much. Okay, thank you. So, I wonder if we could get a cameraman there. <laughs> My question is addressed to Monique and uh, Ron Jeremy. Um, drawing from your own experience, what do you have to say about, the, uh, about people thinking that if you repeatedly have sex for the camera and acting in, after acting in a number of porn films, does that kind of take anything out of your personal life and personal pleasure, or would you say that that isn't true? 
Well, we're, it's, we're part of the, I guess it's an alternate lifestyle. We could separate, you know, real love from sex. But look, people have been doing this for years. I mean, most guys already understand this. Women as they are now are developing a term called boy toy, where they can understand more of a sexual thing than an emotional thing. So, I mean, we are of that ilk that we can understand, you know, that sex doesn't have to be when you're in love with somebody. You can enjoy sex but, for sex but, sake. But the question, Ron, is, does the fact that you have to perform sex somehow denude and, and reduce the experience of, of intimacy that you would like in your real life, as opposed well, you, to your professional? The same thing as the brothel workers in Nevada. You know, you separate it. You know, this is the person, like, they have that term called love or money. They don't really need recreational sex, a lot of them, because but, they're getting that. So it's like they, they have that real romantic lover. A lot of girls in porn have boyfriends and lovers and husbands, and they're totally into So do you, do you enjoy sex when you're not being filmed? More. I well, I think, I think I want to go like this and go like this with the legs like that. Oh, me, I, don't, <laughs> I prefer it. Money. Monique, I, I, we're performing on camera. One, with a girl alone, you're just having a good time. Okay. One of our viewers, somebody called Trey from Dallas, has sent a question on an email, and it's not dissimilar. To women working in the industry, can you truly detach yourself from work and private life? If so, how, if not what, is the biggest struggle that working in the industry creates in your private life? Um, I can totally, you know, separate it. When I'm on film, I'm Monique Alexander, I'm the sex fixin, I see filthy things, I, I do things and, and I enjoy it, but I am a very shy girl in my personal life and when it comes to being intimate with somebody in my personal life, I can be kind of like, oh, is that, oh, oh, oh I don't know if I can touch that and I, I, I get really shy. And the Piss off your husband. <laughs> Well, it's, it's a comfort thing. It's a different thing when you, you it's, like on set, it's, it, you're just straight sex. There's not really an intimacy. In your private life, there's a passion. There's that intimacy for that person, that lust, that, you, that privacy that you have, and it makes it so different. But you, I, ju but you just said that in private, mm -hmm. real intimate relationships, mm -hmm you're slightly lacking in confidence. Oh, totally. Totally lacking in confidence when it comes to my personal life. H has, that, has that happened because of your professional interest in No, porn? not at all. I mean, porn has helped me so much sexually and, and to be that sex fixer. And, and, and it made me realize it's okay to be like, yes, smack my <laughs> on my hair. And, you know. <laughs> Wait, see, you can try that in your real life, too, you know. Uh, you know, we, most people in this room okay. know can separate sex from romantic sex. Sorry. Okay, great. There's, could you stand, please? You guys are both saying that um, being in the porn industry is, is almost universally demeaning towards women. But what I'm wondering is... Who said that? She's talking about oh, These guys, yeah. yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> You're good. Um, but I'm wondering, isn't it more demeaning to sort of force this victim status on an entire sector of women who are choosing this job of their own free will? We agree. Great. Great. And I mean, there are arguments to that question, Monique's, well, they're just stupid if they're doing that type of stuff. She did it the right way in her mind. Ron's made a 29-year career out of it. Um, but what we're saying is the majority of women in this industry, I mean, we're not making up these numbers that the girls last 18 months in this thing, and they are victimized. They are degraded. These titles, I mean, no one's commented on, I'm not just saying these titles to shock this audience. No, but Craig, the point the questioner is making is not about the reaction of those involved, but it's you imposing a very negative and victimized status on women who perform in the industry. She's saying, is that reasonable and fair? You're yeah. committing the error. Oh, well, and, no, I'm not. I mean, I, I didn't start this ministry. I didn't start this ministry six years ago and think one day we'll have porn stars calling my cell phone saying, help, I need out. I can't do this anymore. I've had four surgeries on my body uh, because of this. I, I might never have kids. So we have a fund now called the Esther Fund that works with porn stars. We're not just saying, hey, come over to our side, Monique. We're not. They're calling us saying, I can't do this job anymore. It's ruining my life. We currently are helping about six gals that, that just left the industry last year. So we're not making it up that they're victims. They're calling us saying, help, I can't do this anymore. Okay. And, and from my point of view, um, like I was saying, I recruited people into the business. And yes, they do make a choice. But sometimes you can't 
foresee in the future how that choice is going to affect you. Because our society tells them that porn is cool. We have young kids even wearing shirts that say porn star. And so they sit there and they say, oh, this is going to be great. And they don't think of the results. They don't think that they're going to be kicked out of the police academy because that violates morality clause. They don't think ahead. And yes, that's their own fault, but they are still victimized. Okay, okay he's wrong. got six girls. You got two girls in your letter here. That's a total of eight girls. I'll give you hundreds of girls who are perfectly happy making porn. They have nice lives after porn. So that's the big, big majority. Not okay, what you're talking about. Right here. I put up, I was at the award show. I put up on YouTube a video of Jenna Jameson saying, oh. I'll never spread my legs for this industry again. Within a day, 242,000 people saw it. I got a letter from the lawyer at AVN that says, you know what? No, we can't have that message out. So even the biggest porn star out there says, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, I've well, made money. Well, she made $17 million. She's made money, money, but she feels trapped. She I live with Jenna Jameson, and just because she said that, that's how she feels now. She's 30-something years old. She's done spreading her legs, and she can say that. It has nothing to do she with... She has $17 million dollars in the bank. She, she can retire. Exactly. Okay. Okay. But even she feels as a victim. Okay. She no, she does victim. not. Well, that's not what no, she, she meant. Does. She okay. meant that she's done Okay, one second. It. One more question, sir. Two questions. Uh, one, you talk about this regret that you felt, and I just want to know why it took you nine years. You know, the reason that it took me so long is because I was so dead set against the church. I hated Christianity and everything it stood for. My father was a pastor. I saw a lot of hypocrisy. And you know what I did? I transferred that onto God. But there's a key element that a lot of people don't get when they're talking about hating the church, and that's that God and some of the people who claim to represent him are two separate things. And while I might have a problem with the people that claim to represent him, God's just this perfect loving father that says that there's nothing you could ever do that would make me love you any less. Your second and question. these guys showed me that. I hear you're in the midst of settling down with a woman, um, possibly tying the knot. I don't know if you have children. If you had a daughter and she pursued the porn industry, how would you react to that? Well, of course, I have a pet tortoise. <laughs> now, the thing is, what I said to the guy earlier is similar, is that when you have, like, there's a double standard, and it's a little tougher when you have a daughter who wants to do it than a guy. But first of all, a lot of girls in porn have not had a lot of college education. I think she has. I know Candida has. Uh, Julie Ashton has. Not of them haven't. Would so a lot you of girls... be happy? Would you be happy? <coughs> Wouldn't be my first choice. Daughter, but if, if she has... Would you be happy for your daughter to appear in some of the films that you've appeared in? And to be well, involved I like to in think that she would choose a route like Jenna Jameson did, like she's done or she's done. I like to think that she would do that. When she turns 18 years of age, she'll do what she wants, but I like to think I'll raise her a certain way. If she goes to college, as a lot of my family has done, she may want to use her mind for a job, maybe even make less money. Most people here at Yale probably will not go to porn because they're in college. A lot of girls in porn didn't get to college. So it's a very good income, very good occupation. So are you saying, Ron, are you as a father, after she graduates from college, would you be proud? My first choice is president and being at Yale. Second choice, porn's fine. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. My goal or my hope would be when you, you go home, uh, you think twice uh, about putting on a porn. Or next time uh, your boyfriend is asking you to go along with these things, you stand up and say, you know what, no, this isn't, this isn't what I want. Um, you know, are we going to change all your ideas and all, all your thoughts uh, in, in an hour show? Uh, Probably not. Uh, if you do want help, know that, that we want to help you. Uh, we want to get you accountable. We want to get you to be able to talk about this stuff um, and get people that, that would come alongside you because we do think that there's something better uh, than porn. Um, I hope you can see, though, too, as, as much as we disagree and we go back and forth with these two, um, that the message that we're trying to share tonight it is a message of love. And, um, you know what? We'll go to dinner afterwards. I'll continue to travel with Ron. Uh, and, and hopefully, as a Christian, as a pastor, I hope you see more significance that, uh, in that than in our discussion about porn. Uh, and that, you know what? We, we can't even have the Republicans or the Democrats get along with themselves. Two guys can get up here, debate the heck out of porn, and then go to dinner. And yeah, I got to buy. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, thanks for coming out tonight. Okay, thank you. Ron. You can, you can log on to Porn Demographic and then go to ch uh, check out Porn Statistics.
and get family safe media, preserving family values in the media driven society. And then it goes children, internet, porn statistics. It's all on your computer. And it says, average age of people observing porn is under 18 when they first get into it. But over here, and he's seen this demographic, largest consumer of internet porn, 35 to 49 years of age. That is our demographic. We're not catering to kids. That's our demographic, 35 to 49 years of age, okay? Secondly, you know, when Chloe Sevigny did a hardcore sex scene, it enabled all the girls in porn to now say that an Academy Award nominated actress, you know, who was nominated for Boys Don't Cry, did a total hardcore oral sex scene, including the <laughs> that enabled girls to look at it as a performance. So if a girl nominated for an Academy Award could do hardcore, then so can we. It's still considered a performance, not prostitution, not necessarily degrading. It's still considered a performance that happens to have hardcore sex in it. And it's part of that wide world of entertainment. You want to laugh? You can watch Monty Python and Animal House. You want to cry? Watch Terms of Endearment of Wuthering Heights. You want to get scared? Watch Brian De Palma, all right? You want to get dizzy and nauseous? Watch Cloverfield. But if you want to get <laughs> excited and get a little erotically excited, a little, you know, you can watch a late night HBO movie with cheerleaders, flight attendants, or nurses, or watch a porn film. Part of that wide world of entertainment, nothing more and nothing less. Okay, thank you very much. Well, that's just about all we have time for today. I hope you've enjoyed the discussion and learned something about the business of pornography. Before we go, I need to thank our guests and contributors, Craig Gross, Ron Jeremy, Monique Alexander, and Donnie Pauling. Craig and Ron, you've debated over 25 times. Do you feel as though there's some sort of common ground that you can reach or that either of you have separately made any progress by debating with each other? We're both against censorship by the U.S. government. Okay. That's, about where, that's what we agree on. Everything else? No, I would say... He harbors on the very select few. No, you, I deal with the majority. Okay, I'm saying what else we agree on. Don't argue yeah. here. So, uh, um, no, <laughs> we, we both agree. And, and I pick on the adult industry. They need to do more. Um, to help keep this away from kids. Ron, when I asked him about this, he came on and he filmed a, a commercial with us called Pete the Porno Puppet. Uh, Ron makes a cameo appearance in that because Ron, I mean, he's great. Jay Leno talked about that. He plays with my kids and, and he's a great guy. He has his degree in education. I believe Ron doesn't want this stuff to end up in kids. So we can agree on that. And Ron even came over to our side in a sense and said, you know what, this is a good message that, that I want to help put that okay, out Okay, so you agree on no censorship. You agree on the principle of keeping it out of the hands of children. Anything else you agree? He buys dinners whenever we go out. Yeah, he's, uh, okay. <laughs> the gentleman in the cat. Yeah. I want to repeat some of the statistics that you've talked about. Average time in the business, two years. Huge salaries. Long work weeks. But I'm not talking about porn, I'm talking about investment banking. And I think a large majority of the people in this room are lining up at the doors of companies like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley to get these jobs. Why? Maybe you're not. I am. Okay? <laughs> what, what, is, what is your question? And what I'm trying to find out is, why is the porn industry fundamentally different from any one of these other industries that degrades its workers? How is it not degrading for a single mother with three children to earn $7 an hour flipping burgers at McDonald's? Okay, sir. Thank you. <laughs> that's their question. That's their question. That's their question. Take it away, Craig. <laughs> we could talk about all kinds of social problems, but tonight we're talking about porn. Oh. <laughs> okay. The lady, thank you. Thank you. you. By the way, one, oh, one second. Statistics. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there is a connection. If you work in porn for two years, you get to work at McDonald's for the rest of your life. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Sure, you, you buy a McDonald's. Okay, let's just have this question. Most of my fantasies come from things that I've already done on camera and then I want to take home and do it in a way that feels good and my question is maybe everyone here can answer people in the real world don't they have hot hardcore sex like we do on camera I mean or is it just fantasy for this is yeah they're kinkier than we are <laughs> I mean, you're saying it's fantasy and not a way to behave, but don't people in the real world have hardcore sex? Like, and what I'm saying, and, and most of you watch porn all by yourself, and it's not translating to uh, watched, you know, uh, one whore plus one more, and now I'm going to go experience that with somebody else. Most of you that watch porn watch it all by yourself, and it's keeping you from that hot 
you know, crazy sex because you're on the internet. You're on watching this stuff and it's not turning you into these ravaged beasts and having this crazy sex. It's keeping you from those sexual relationships. Okay, hold it there. This gentleman here. Thank you. So my question is for you, Craig. Um, I mean, I could open up the Bible to Leviticus and read you a passage about how homosexuals should be stoned. But of course, I'm not going to present the Bible as a murderous book. Um, and I guess I'm asking you, if you argue by case studies or by simple examples, do you feel like you're actually presenting uh, a valid argument? Do you feel like you're establishing cause and effect by presenting what is a response bias for your website? No one's going to write you a letter, I think, that says, you know, I worked in porn for two years, my life's okay. So what have you done to establish cause and effect? Or are you addressing that issue at all? Or are you just satisfied with Yeah, I mean, we started, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people said... A lot of people said to us, well, you know, you're ahead of your curve. And we're like, no, we're not ahead of the curve. We started this website as a response to a problem that we saw, not only amongst church people, but amongst, you know, everybody out there that, hey, I'm looking at this stuff. This is causing me to do things that I never thought I would do. It's breaking apart my marriage, my family. So that's kind of where we came in. I spend a lot of time reading not only the Bible, but, but preaching out of this. You know, I'm not going to... Some of you don't buy this. And so to me, I feel like the evidence is not only here, but it's in all these stories that we do have and all these people that have come to our site to say but you know, I guess I guess the, Craig I guess the question is if 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 you were looking for some kind of greater objectivity shouldn't you have a place on your website where you invite people who have had a very happy life as a consequence of porn I'm you know, seeing the both of them right here I mean our website you know I, we're not just dealing with those people you know that that hate this. We do get a lot of letters. We, we go to the AVN porn show, we go to all the other, a lot of the other porn shows, and we meet a lot of people. Donnie was one of them. He came up to me for four years. I love it. I'm making half a million dollars, you jerk. You, you know, we go on our website saying, what are you guys doing, you hypocrites, all this. And, you know, and then it caught up to him. And so we, we see on all sides of the case, um, you know, are, are they going to switch over? You know, they're fine doing this, okay. right?